What up, and welcome to another episode of Brotherhood Without Manners. I don't think we turned the air conditioner off. Did you turn the air conditioner off? No. Let me, I can do it with the phone. <laughs> That's it. That's the money right there. <laughs> Hey, yo, hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Brotherhood Without Manners, your favorite full spoiler reread podcast of George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. As always, I'm your host, Zach, sitting here with me, my brother, Nate. I just got a shiver I up my that. back. It it's was, a ghost. Uh, it's not a fucking ghost. I'm gonna bitch for Do it, minute. dude. I'm it's Halloween, it. yeah, and it's like, because we recorded a little. I like Halloween. Really? You know, um, I, we grew up in the Northeast, like New it's England. Fun. I yeah. like the spooky fall season of like scaring yourself. I fucking hate paranormal investigator shows. And they're my God. so fucking ridiculous. They're, a they're waste over the top of nonsense. Humanity resources. I don't care. <sighs> Fuck me. I just had to get that out. Anyway, but, yeah, we don't talk about scary, no. spooky shows during the Halloween season. We talk about a song of ice and fire. And currently, we're reading Storm of Swords. Yeah. We last chapter read. Uh, oh, I guess we're going. I'm jumping way ahead. I'm sorry. If you've not been here, we are full spoiler. All right. And so we will talk about this as if you are aware of the whole thing. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. We love <laughs> you. Anyway, as I was saying. To the good stuff. Last episode, we were reading Tyrion 2 from Storm of Swords. Mm-hmm. Tyrion is a fucking idiot. Yeah, man. Tyrion's acting a fool. So he... He starts by visiting Varys in Varys' room. He does that when Varys is not currently there so that he can try and snoop around. But apparently he ain't no fucking Scooby in the gang because he doesn't find shit. And he demands a meeting with Shay. He does learn a bunch of information about, you know, who's been reinstated. Meister, Meister Pycelle is there so that Tywin can ensure he has a little bit more power so that way a Tyrell is not placed as the Grand Meister. Um... What's his name? Boros Blount was reinstated to the fucking oh, yeah. the King's Guard and Yeah, so some stupid shit. So he doesn't do much and then visits with Shay. Doesn't do much. Yeah, I mean he reads, he yeah. uh I think and he then, talks yeah, to some people. Goes to, Varys to visit with Shay. Where he goes originally to tell her to she has to leave and go away, but she very similar to Jamie and Cersei convinces him by fucking him that Yeah. It is so sweet what they have, and she wants to go to the royal wedding. She wants to wear her gems and jewels, which I made it very clear how I feel about that. And Tyrion left thinking, promising her that he'll keep her and keep her safe, but kind of kicking himself, saying, fool, fool. He's he's an idiot. He's a fucking idiot. Yeah, he returned feeling very lonely that evening. But we're not reading Tyrion this episode. We are reading Arya 2. What Storm up? of Swords. This is the moment, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. Here we are. We talked about the beginnings, the makings back in Game of Thrones, but we have finally arrived at the moment of truth. The moment of truth. Shit. Well, our namesake, anyway. Arya <laughs> is picking vegetables in a garden. Well, last we left Oh, Arya. shit. Yeah, I'm jumping way ahead again. Yeah, her and Hot Pie and Gendry had made a daring escape from Harrenhal. And they were fleeing, uh, as we picked up in Storm. Being pursued by Arya, believe, some bloody mummers, as well as being circumvented by a wolf pack. Which, yeah, dude. Uh, as they fled, riding to the brink of their exhaustion, where they were literally falling asleep in the saddle. Arya warged. Arya warged for one of the first times that we're shown in the, in the books. And tore the fucking chasers apart. Fuck yeah. And that, it was a pretty short, pretty straightforward chapter, and that was where it was left, was Arya tearing into these pursuers as Nymeria. Yeah. And this one, as we pick up, Arya's grubbing for vegetables in a dead Yay. man's garden. She can see Hot Pie over collecting cabbages, and Arya begins to hear some singing and notes that Hot Pie hears it too. Gendry is fast asleep in the shade beyond any hearing of anything. I love Gendry's response, or not Gendry, sorry, Hot Pie's response to hearing it because he's holding some carrots and he like looks at her with like the panic and he's like, what do I do? What do I do? And she's, you know, handling business. Yeah, Arya immediately is like, shit, bloody mummers or Bruce Bolton's men. Only, why'd they be singing? These aren't cheery folk. Right. And so there's... 
uh, Hot Pie is like, yo, we, we should hide. Yeah, she sends him to go. Uh, well, she tells him, go wake Gendry. And he's like, no, we should hide. We we should hide. And she looks around. She's like, there's nowhere to fucking hide. There's nowhere to hide. fucking hide. The go. cottage is burned and on the bank of the river's edge. Like, And Arya's like, fuck, we shouldn't have left the woods. I knew it. I knew, I knew it. it. I, I knew it. it. I'm always right. But she tells Hot Pie, go get Gendry, take the three horses, and hide behind the one remaining cottage wall. And right. it should do for you, you at least. And she goes and hides behind a tree nearby while drawing her sword. And, again, like, I know that she's trained with needle and shit, but everybody sees it. Do you think she could, like, do anything with the sword? No. If, if some Like, it's just so massive. Yeah, she like, would get messed up. And it's apparent in everyone who sees her that it's just out of balance. She would her first swing would be a blunder, and she'd lose the blade immediately. Right. So the the singing continues, walking down the road, uh, almost passing, until one of the horses wickers, nickers. Well, she Nickers. was uh, as she yeah, because she ran up and knelt next to a big old willow tree beside the bend beside the bend of the road, and quickly just sent up a prayer to the old gods, those old tree gods, that they hide her and let him pass. And, yeah, then the horse wickered and the song broke off. And Arya hears two men debating what's behind the wall, wolves or lions, two feet or four. And Archer, as he's called, says he means to lose a few shafts behind that wall, and any honest man would show his face. Only outlaws would slouch and hide. Yeah. And Arya jumps out. Don't! Please don't. And she notes that there's only three. Sirio could easily take three. Boy, put down that sword. Uh, that was uh, Tom of Seven Strings. Str- seven Streams. Se- technically Seven Streams, but yeah. he likes to be called yeah, Seven Strings. Uh, we don't learn his name just yet, but yeah, the men are afoot, dirty, and she can easily note the singer as he carries a wood harp. And yes, this is Tom Seven Streams, Lem Lemon Cloak, and Angai, the Ang archer. Guy. Archer. And The singer tells her to put the sword away. Arya tells them, keep walking and singing, and she won't kill them. And they Ah. laugh. Ah. You hear that? It's kind of what they were trying to portray with Ed Sheeran in the show. (laughs) Don't. Don't. So they're like, why don't you you look kind of, you know, fucked. Why don't you come with us? We'll feed you. We'll, We'll put you somewhere safe. The road is no safe place for a child alone, and Gendry, she's not alone. And he, Ooh. They emerge, him and Hot Pie, which, gotta give Hot Pie credit, he does emerge as well, walk, leading the horses. And the singer notes the horses, and Arya notes that the singer seems to be the one doing the talking, but it's the archer that she's got to worry about, which I just yeah. love her little combative mind of always being like, nope, he's the threat yeah. right now. It's fun to see her, like especially in comparison now to Jamie, who's making these kinds of same calculations, keeping an eye on what's happening around him as he's moving through, and she's doing all these similar traits. Mm, Not similar, quite to the just, level. Because, I mean, technically, I mean, Jamie says a crossbow, but he hates archers. Archer, right. Like, bows are a coward's weapon, but Arya aspires to be she as good with the bow yeah. with Ang- as Angai is. And, yeah, the singer asks their names, and Gendry asks theirs first, and so they're given. They are introduced, and Arya says that her name is Squab, because that's what they've been calling her, so they might as well stick with that. Hot Pie's Hot Pie, and Gendry is the bull, taking after Arya, not giving his true name. Yeah. And Tom notes the they Bolton s- sigil yeah. on Arya's chest there. And, and she's asks, like, fuck, fuck, Pretty fuck. much, yeah. And she gets mad at Tom calling her little one and child and says, I'm not a child, thinking that children don't kill people. And she did. Which is just, yeah. Arya's not a child no more. And they give the sweet line that they're the well, king's she is a men. Child. So. Yeah, she's a child. Yeah. That was, I was just saying that they stated that they're king's men. And then Arya and Gendry, they're like, which, which one? And they're like, that's a good question. Well, Robert. They, they, yeah, King Robert. <laughs> Robert. Yeah, I know. I mean, obviously they answered. I was. Arya's like, yeah, you, you don't really look like kings, man. Like, you got no horses, blah, blah, blah. And Hop High bro blurts out, yeah, we were heading for River Run. And Arya's like, I'm going to fucking kill this kid. Yeah, like, dude. Real quick. And she tells him, shut up. And Tom says, well, it's a long, hungry way to River Run. We've got an inn full of our friends. Not far ahead. We could stop. And How far ahead? Uh, and he uh, he says it's like less than a mile. Like, it's not far at all. Yeah. Um, and Genry is like, yeah, but what about these friends that are waiting at the inn that you're talking about? 
What are they? Who are you? Are you going to kill us? Yeah. I mean, these three have been captured at every fucking turn yeah. by random shit. Uh, Arya, so. Arya thinks when they're mentioning this that not everyone who spoke to you friendly was really your friend, which I just, she's so astute. Yeah, we get Sharn as the innkeep, sharp-tongued, but has good heart, and her husband, Sharna's husband, and an orphan boy they took in. So these are the same, well, two that we met in Jamie and Brienne's earlier yeah, chapter. which is super cool to already be getting this little... Yeah. Like, co- different view of these people who, you know, we we almost completely distrusted because Brienne was against them. Right. And Well, yeah, you think they're just out, out, outlaws, and, I mean, they are, but... They aren't they at aren't, the same yeah. time, yeah, so... And he says there's fresh bread and maybe meat as well, and whatever you stole from old Pate's garden besides. And Arya's like, we never stole. And he asks her, oh, so you're old Pate's daughter, sister, wife? Tell me true. Tell me no lies, Squib. I buried old Pate myself right under that willow, and you don't have his look. And then he just kind of plucks a sad string and notes that we've buried many a good man this past year, but we've no wish to bury you. And he tells the archer to show her, and and yeah. guy just fucking va lets yeah. loose an arrow. It's like about an inch from her fucking head. I was surprised that she even made the comment of what you missed, missed. cause like. She seems astute enough to be like, oh, fuck. He could have just ended me right there. Yeah, but I mean, by the time the first arrow hits, he's already got a second knocked and drawn, and she notes that. She's like, oh, fuck. Because she says that. Dude, I put. did you put the whole quote? Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. Go but, for it. No, yep. you, you, you got it. Arya thought she understood what Sirio had meant when he said quick as a snake and smooth as summer silk. But now she knew she hadn't. Like, Yang guy is that good that she's like, oh, that's what Sirio meant, is you got to be that quick, well, that smooth, that graceful, right, and on fucking key. Like, I think it's important that she gets to see something like that. Well, right, yeah. Just because it, it, she did very much so think she was hot shit at the moment. And that's not to say she's not incredibly skilled for what no, she No, but yeah, she doing. killed someone. She was kind of high on this Jack and Hagar yeah, power yeah. and thinking, I mean, she's wielding a sword that obviously she can't wield, thinking that. She can take three verse one. Or like, three verse three with Hot Pie right. and Gendry, but even still, that like, and this kind of gives her that moment of clarity of, yeah, we stand no chance. Like, this is, we are outmatched on. Every single front. Yeah. And, dude, I lost my place in my thing. Yeah, so Arya realizes they got no chance, wishing she had his skill with the bow. His bow and the skill to wield it. Yeah, bow. but she agrees to She to lowers, go with yeah, lowers her sword and says, we'll see the end, but you'll walk in front and we'll ride behind so we can see what you're doing. And Lem's like, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> Whatever. So Arya, she, she's her sword, heads over to Hot Pie, tells him to gather up the carrots and cabbages and vegetables and shit. And for yeah. once, he doesn't argue. And Tom, start, he asks if any of them know any songs. You know any songs? It gets boring around here trying to sing by myself, especially with fucking Lem over here, can't carry a tune. Yeah, he... And he's always singing Rush. Arya says singing is <laughs> stupid, <laughs> and it makes noise. We could have heard... We heard you a long way off. We could have killed you. And Martin just said... Tom smiles so that he didn't think so, which is pretty great. And then Angai, or Angai and Gendry kind of get into it, because Angai's like, yeah, don't assume... That, you know, just because someone acts like something, they don't know anything about what's going on. And Gendry's like, you didn't know we were there. And he's like, yeah, I wouldn't be so sure about that. So right. there were eyes on these three before these three came up, right. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And so uh, Hot Pie says he knows the bear and the maiden fair, and him and Tom belt it the fuck out. Yeah, dude. And Arya is absolutely astonished because Hot Pie has a good voice and he sings well. Check your privilege, bitch. And the only thing she thought he did well was bake. Like, I mean, I love Arya and all, but like, poor Hot Pie. Yeah, no, you're kind of being a bitch about that. To like Hot Pie. N- and not, I mean, overall, like she kind of dra- like Hot Pie's been through some. Hot shit Pie has says, been dragged along. He's like, a softy, right. like he's not yeah. this hardened lord. He's just a baker's boy from Flea Bottom, and so he doesn't know, like, like he yeah, he had to... what was coming to him from Arya right. in yes. Game of Thrones when he was the bully, absolutely, and early on. In but Clash, she had but... the right of him. I think we discussed it during Clash how him and Gendry are kind of like 
they're content here. They're going to be passing from whoever Lord it it is. And we'll get that at the end of this chapter with him, which is nice. But yeah, like he's up on the guy. He's here. He's got your back like as best he can, Mm -hmm. as best he knows how. So they, uh, crossing a brook and guy brings down a duck, which Lem goes and retrieves. And they say that maybe they can have it for dinner that evening. And the singing makes the miles seem shorter, which I think is interesting that Arya notes that having just said that. Singing is stupid, it makes noise, but she's now understanding why soldiers do it, why men marching do it, because right. it makes the miles go quicker, it seems. And soon enough, the inn is before them. And it looks homey enough, she thinks. And this is, of course, the inn where Jamie and Brienne yes, just were at. She even notes the, the skiff, it's the boat that was at the dock there. Yeah. And. It's funny because they, well, they actually, before they see the sign, they go to the stables. Well, because she points it out to Gendry. And Gendry's like, Do you know how to sail? And she's like, You put the sails up and the wind pushes you. And he's like, Right, what if it's blowing in the wrong way? Then you put it down and you row. And he's like, Okay. And against the current, it's going to be slower than just walking. And so Arya's like, mm, Shit. Well, all right. So yeah, they get to the stables. Arya, again, Notes the exact same thing Jamie and Brian both did. Yeah. The large amounts of horse shit. But uh, seemingly lack of horse is because there's none in the stables currently. Mm-hmm. And Arya says that one of them should stay and guard the horses. And Lem's like, no, there's no need for that. But Gendry's like, yep, yeah, I'll stay. Cool. Yeah. And then they approach the sign. Right. And I love it because she says it just has some stupid old king on it. She clearly just doesn't know, but... That's her relative, like right. that's Torrin Stark, and I just think that that's it's interesting that the Stark pays no mind to this, and I think I part don't think of it the, the kneeling the king who knelt would well, and that's her. what I was gonna say is, and I think part of that is to show that he's not the king that she would ever aspire no. to be following no. in any way, it, it, you know, and even though it's he knelt and he did what was good for the north and his, the northern people. She's going to be going Arya after... would have been the one to fight. Right. I would want to fight, yeah, no matter what. Right. And that's absolutely, yeah. Kneeling is not an option to Arya Stark. Right. And, yeah, I think that's quite significant. They enter the inn, and Sharna is standing there telling Arya, calling her boy, telling her, you're going to gawk or get out of the way. She starts giving Lem and them shit about dragging mud in this... Obviously, a well-known right. relationship here between Sharna and these boys. She takes the duck and calls up for husband, who the man who met Jamie and Brienne emerges, and Sharna is totally pushing him around. Yeah, and he is, and which is funny him. considering how menacing he appears in right. Jamie and Brienne. Which is again, it's funny that to little Arya, he's this pushover yep. of a man. To Brienne and Jamie, he's this. Dangerous he, not, man I mean, because yeah, we I was, don't know I his didn't motives. I scary, but right. yeah, dangerous man who could potentially lead them into I mean, a dangerous for many reasons, right? He could, he could have just shot them in the face. He could have tried to kill them. Right he he could have, yeah, you know, tried to figure them, out it's Jamie things, right. or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, it's so interesting the way it switched. And Sh- Sharna tells him to hang up the duck, and she's got rabbit on, so they ain't doing duck tonight because it's got to air out and dry out. Yeah, and, like, shut the fuck up. Arya offers the vegetables for a meal, saying, we've got no coin, but we've got some vegetables. And Sharna's like, oh, yeah, do you now? And takes a look at him, calls husband up again, tells him to go wash him. And Arya and them all sit as Sharna's like, go, go, sit. I'll start getting ale and shit for I, you. I wrote down here that Sharna tells Hot Pie to fuck off, basically, because when... Arya offers the the vegetables. She goes, hot pie, give her the vegetables. And she's like, where's this hot pie? And he's like, that's me. That's my name. She's like, no, fuck you. Yeah, not like, in no. my restaurant. I name my diners my and name. my dishes different things. Yeah. You're not hot pie anymore, boy. <laughs> Fat boy, probably, because she's a jerk. <laughs> so Arya, hot pie, sit. And Arya immediately scooches up and asks Hot Pie if he can sail, but then the ale arrives and Hot Pie apparently has never heard or Ew. had anything so delicious. So the... Conversation kind of becomes moot. Husband then enters again saying that there are horses in the stables, and all of them are kind of like, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. We know. And then Tom gives him shit saying, yeah, we had to refill him with the three that you just gave away. And discussing, obviously, the Jamie, this is Martin saying, clearly, hey, this is the same inn in case you didn't catch it. And husband said that, yeah, it was up to Lemon them to retrieve the horses. And they're like, yeah, you never showed. They never showed. And you must have been drunk. 
us no it's uh yeah, yeah it goes they're... into like a banter ha, ha, about ha, 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 ha. yeah they're just doing the in talk and aria during this is like fucking i knew they were outlaws and thinks that if they try to they try to rob them rob them they're gonna be very sorry right right aria again with that bravado having seen archer at this point she goes right back to it but more shit's given about jamie brian and cleos the three because they're like oh wasn't one in chain and one a woman and Arya's just sipping on her ale, thinking yeah, of how, they, over how they can steal that boat. Right, right. She will not give that idea up. So the bread arrives, and Hot Pie starts schooling motherfuckers. Yeah, he does, dude. He's like, no, the, the reason this is shit is because you specifically didn't need the dough enough and then let it rise. And it's like, yeah, he clearly needs to be doing something other than traveling on the road, getting beat right. and tor- tortured. F- fucking future faceless man. Yeah, dude. Tom sits down across from Arya and offers her an IOU for <laughs> three gold dragons for their three horses. And of course, he doesn't say it's an IOU. At first, Hot Pie discovers that it's a letter with some writing on it, and he's like, yeah, we don't actually have the gold, but... And Arya's like, yeah, you're fucking no better than robbers. And he says, well, obviously, you've never seen true robbers, because they don't offer payment when they take things from you. Even if it's just an IOU. He says, no, my dear... Well, not my dear, but... No, it is for the good of the realm, so that they can fight the king's fights. And he asks, would you deny the king? And... Arya's. She tells them to keep it. Like, just keep it. The well, pay- they're all looking at her <clears throat> yeah. at this point when he asks if you would deny the king. And it's such an interesting thing because the king they serve, this is the hand's daughter. Right, right. right. And so, yeah, they're all looking at her. Every single person in the in and Arya says, yeah, she doesn't want the parchment. She wants the boat and someone to show them how to use it. And then they all start laughing at her. And Arya wants to scream at them, but finds herself starting to join in, which yeah. is interesting. Does she? Is Almost she caught like, up in I it? I think it's or? kind of her way of like playing it off as clearly that's not what I was going to really ask for. That was the joke. Almost again, not to fucking bring it up, but that Ed Sheeran part where she says she's going to the capital to kill Cersei oh, yeah, and yeah. all the guys around the fire laugh and they're like ah yeah and she's like yeah yeah I was kidding just but kidding at that moment Gendry bursts in fucking riders the British are coming the British are coming and everyone's like alright cool and Sharon is like alright like chill whatever harm's been done to you three it's past you like you're safe now with the king's men which like what if the an army rolled through That here? just feels so naive. Yeah, to, that's what I thought like, as well. You know, just, yeah, you're safe now because you're with the king's men. Like, I mean, do you think that they have outriders far enough out to where they will spot anything? That I mean, they can I would guess out? that, yeah, like, there's is... a pretty good perimeter on, like, maybe Thoros and Beric are around and Thoros could just smite motherfuckers. I don't know. But, yeah, that seems a bit naive in this landscape to be like, you know, you're you're just safe with us all the time considering – they're moving from place to place, and Sharn is an apparently a known associate of the Brotherhood Without Banners. So, like, she's kind of a target if anyone were to catch wind of that. It just, yeah, it seemed an off place comment that they're all safe here. Yeah, but Arya reaches for her sword anyway, hearing about the riders coming from Gendry, and Lem grabs her wrist and stops her. We'll have no more of that now, he says, and he twists until her hand opens. And Arya panics. A little yeah. PTSD. Of, I'm not having this again. I can't do this again. No, 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 no. It's happening again with Chiswick and Raph yeah, in the mountain at the village where they tortured people asking for shit. And so she grabbed a tankard and slammed it up into Lem's face, <laughs> breaking his nose. Blood spurted everywhere. And when she got free, she yelled run and bolted. And Lem grabs her yeah. up. Because, I mean, again... She's a child. Yep. He's a big fucking, he's a big mother. And so he just kind of holds her out dangling and kicking because it's Arya. And he yells, stop it, you little fool. And Gendry moved in to help until Tom stepped in front of him with a dagger. And she hears horses and riders and voices outside. And the door opens. And first, a huge Tyroshi man entered, followed by just a ragtag. Give me a second. I need a tissue real quick because this is going to get so sad. I get so oh. emotional at this point. I actually <sighs> thought you needed a tissue. For no, a not for real. I'm good. Uh, no one says a word as they enter. A few give her a couple curious glances, but nothing more. But Arya recognizes one. The last one that comes walking in and she sees him. Harwin? 
she calls, and it was Holland's son, who used to lead her pony around the yard. He was thinner and harder somehow than at Winterfell, but it was him. And squirming, she wrenched forward. Harwin, it's me! Don't you know me? Don't you? And she's... Ah. And he's like, how would I know a little Bolton fucking yeah, serving Yeah, he's girl? like looking at her suspiciously, and at this point, she's already crying. And, he, and she says, like a baby. I'm a girl. I was Lord Bolton's cupbearer, but he was going to leave me with the goats, so I ran off with Gendry and Hop High. You have to know me. You used to be... Oh, that's that's not B. That's lead. You used to lead my pony when I was little. And his eyes fucking grow all wide as he realizes who the fuck he's looking at right there. Uh, you jumped ahead of just a, one little thing I wanted to know was that, yeah, throw your notebook because you're wrong. <laughs> um, Arya's not sure how to answer him when he says that. Because she's right, like, yeah, so. fuck, I've had so many names. I've been... A nan, I've been the mouse, I've been... I also think it was uh, a clever way of her t- to not say, who it, just in case there's that, A, she's wrong and it's not Harwin, she just thinks it is, and B, maybe he also is aware that this is not a place to announce who she is. Well, I, I also thought the more significant part was the second line, which was maybe she had dreamed Arya Stark. Her dreams are now wolf dreams. We know that. And so that's an interesting line to yeah, come yeah. from a Stark is maybe Arya Stark just exists in wolf form now to Arya. And that, like, Arya is almost dream form for her. Like right. She's... Like, this is this is a different life, and Arya is with Nymeria. And, like, I mean, it's a, just a scary thought as a disassociation for a faceless man. Yeah, yeah. And so, like... That caught me, but yeah, uh, his eyes went wide. Gods be good. Arya underfoot? Lem, let go of her, and Lem just dumps her unceremoniously. He's like, yo, she broke my nose, and he's put her down. Who in seven hells is she supposed to be? And Harwin took a knee, the hand's daughter, Arya Stark of Winterfell. Queen in the north! Queen in the north! No. No. End of Arya Stark, two. And Arya's Arya's got a happy, hopeful moment. Arya's mm-hmm. going home, right? Such a brief, brief <laughs> moment of joy. Arya has now met the Brotherhood without banters. Banters. <laughs> Banners. No, they definitely got banter. They got banter. dun dun dun, dun. Our namesake. Yeah. That's pretty so, cool. So, yeah, it's super sweet. I think we should just commune our small council. You think so? You don't need, think we should discuss here at all or just go straight into that? Well, right, like, now you make me feel weird. Good. We're weird. And welcome to the small council, where we can discuss the chapter. The smallest council. It's not the smallest council. Like, the, I guess it's a pretty small council. All right. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. So... Fucking cool chapter. Um, j- not just because of the introduction of the Brotherhood Without Banners, but the uh, re... Fucking, what's the word I'm looking for I have here? no idea. Uh, Harwin and Arya meeting again. Um, Reigniting that stark spark in Arya. Sure, Giving yeah. Giving her a works. glimpse of home of... Yes. Something worth fighting for. Yeah, something worth fighting for. And... Granted, it's going to get torn away from her. Oh, so quickly. Next chapter. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Do you have an inductee? My inductee is going to Anne Guy the Archer. Sweet. Because, I mean, that fucking Bodo. Like, let's be real. So can I ask you something here quick, though? Isn't he already in the Brotherhood? All right. Sweet. Yeah. So you're just re-inducting him? Well, yeah. He's, okay. in, like, guaranteed a spot. Okay, cool. Yeah. Tight. Until he dies or something terrible yeah but, you, know, you but know dude yeah he, he being cut, that little like, inspiration I, I, like Arya. lemon coke is cool tom seven strings all right i like i like man's raiders the bard so like <laughs> <laughs> uh and yeah so and guy was kind of like the standout for me he's like the one who showed himself as the most capable not only with aria and showing the demonstration of like we could absolutely like, kill you right here and now without a second thought or you can just come and fucking get something to eat with us and then the same thing with the duck. Like, 
motherfucker's getting it. He's bringing yeah, yeah, meat back. Absolutely. Like, he's the only one of them who actually, And he's you know, the youngest. He's a right. very young yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. So he's the only one of them that actually did anything real in the chapter. Yeah, besides, yeah, besides getting restrain drunk. a little girl and, yeah, drink and sing. So, yeah, and guy. So I, I had a lot of different thoughts for inductees. So real quick, I wanted to ask, do you think that there would be potential for a Tom... A Seven Streams point of view prologue chapter, considering he's at River Run. Last we left him, as far as I know, um, which is where Edmir, I think, is back there now with his wife and probably kid, maybe, as well as isn't that where Rob's wife is being held? Is River Run, but he's been popping up all sorts of places. Technically, Lem Lemon Cloak is there's theories that he's the new hound now that the grave digger is potentially well yeah the hound, it's, he's been spotted wearing the helm wearing the helm and so and there's the rumors that the hound is shit. moving around but the hound we think is dead and he's the grave di- there's all sorts of crazy shit but um my inductee's hot pie he <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah he I'm gonna. I like the fat kid. He's he's just he's just worried about the bread. And like I said during the the chapter, like he's been dragged through it. He ran his mouth to Arya. She gave him a beating for it. And since then, he's just been her friend, following around, helping as best he can. He's a scared kid. Who wouldn't fucking be scared? Like with all that shit that's going on. And again, uh, Gendry's aware that she's a lady, but Hot Pie has no fucking clue. And he's just a small folk, like the smallest of folk, even though he's the biggest of them. And he knows his shit on bread, man. And that's it. So he's he's got his trade down. Let him live his well, best I'm life. I'm pretty sure this is where Hot Pie stays. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is where he yeah, he so. stays. He becomes boy. So yeah. Also, he, he gets what. I mean, about as good as he could hit. But again, it is still with the Brotherhood, and don't know how safe that is, Sharna. Right. False claim. And Sharna. so yeah, I'm I want Hot Pie so that he's uh, safe. Cool. We did get some, of course, inductees from some listeners. And we'll start with Karen, who says, for Arya, look at Gendry calling Robert an old drunk, which is actually was a great point that we didn't mention when they say they're King's men and King Robert's men. Gendry's like, that old drunk, he's dead. And they're Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, Hot Pie. Arya stared at him in astonishment. He had a good voice and sang well. He never did anything well except bake. Inductee, Hot Pie, for this compliment alone. Nice. So, Karen, you and Nate share the same inductee, which is always nice. Take two inductees for Hot Pie. Yeah. So, I, uh, we also got an inductee from Corey uh, at the Dreadfort. And he says, hey, guys. Yes, finally the Brotherhood. Welcome to the wild west of the Riverlands, where the small folk are number one and everyone else is hung. Two huge thumbs down for the husband trying to set up an ambush on Brienne and the gang. Shame. Ooh. Arya hasn't been happy for a long time, probably since water dancing lessons with Sirio. It was heartwarming when she saw Harwin. Yo, I almost cried. Yeah, it was it's pretty. Lovely. It's so panicky yeah. and terrifying. And Today's inductee is Tom Seven Strings for trying to buy horses with IOUs. <laughs> Who does he think he is? Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumber? My opinion on Karen's question, did Shay ever love Tyrion? Not a chance. She banged Tywin. The only thing she truly loves is being in the limelight. Corey from the Dreadfort. Well, Corey, to that I say, I think Shay also likes that hand of the king. Dang. Yeah. Read our our other inductee. We also got an inductee from Julian who says, Hello! I love when stories of different POV chapters happen to cross roads. You start to imagine it does, and then more and more elements concur, and then it totally works out. Didn't think much of the chapter, to be honest. It was uh, usual Arya leading the mini troops and Gendry being a badass. Archer seems to be quite a badass as well, though. As for my inductee, I have no idea if we already met the guy, and I don't remember him at all, but it's Harwin. Recognizing Arya with a bit of emotion and a lot of respect, kneeling in front of her, using the cute nickname she likes, so many details that gave me chills. All hail to Arya Stark, the daughter of the hand with the heart emoji. And then Valar Handotaris. <laughs> and he says, sorry, that's a little hard one to improv, but I think I got it. I, I think, think it I was good. It. it was a good Thank one. Thank you, Julian. Thank, Thank you, Corey. You. Thank so, you, Karen. We did, uh, I want to just mention to Julian, because it was two books ago so far, and that's a long time ago, especially if you're, you know, 
only on your first read or your first reread even. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, but we met Harwin a few times. He was with the group when they found the Dire Wolves back in Brand 1 of Game of Thrones. He was along for that little ride for the beheading of uh, the traitor to the Night's Watch. Yeah, he also uh, accompanied and south and then was part of the contingent that was sent out to slay the mountain who rides with Beric right. Dondarrion and he that's was how of, he's in this group right. that's how he came to be he, he was, was with by the Ned. 20 men of Ned's right. forces that were sent with the 20 men of Beric Dondarrion's to go out and fuck the and then we the also uh, just reaching out from the ether Sid who's a bit behind yeah so it'll out. be a little bit before he gets this but I suppose we should finally put this on should we tell the fucking I thought you we... have told it on air have you not told it Did on I air t- if I told it on air then I'm not going to do it again. I don't recall if you did or didn't. All right, I'm not going to. And I'll just respond to his email privately. I think that's the way you've been doing it. Good. For that so it'll stupid be just... fucking... Yeah, I don't want it on air. Sid asked about the bear joke, so that will be private message fucking to you, Sid, because joke. Christ, that and, bear joke. And uh, did you... Uh, we talked about the Shay episode a little bit. We had some correspondence on that from the YouTube as well with uh, Stephanie. Yeah. And she... She had some strong opinions there as well. Yeah, she had some good points to make. Yeah. Um, She brought up a good point about Cersei's absolutely cold-blooded disposal of Shay's body, which is valid, and sort of the fear that that brings up for all the sex workers of Westeros, which is a very valid point. I, again, just contend that it's it's the station that she was after. Um, Yeah, because she also then mentioned the... The way that Shay died and how that's a terrible way to die. Oh, right. And so I wanted to say that, first of all, yeah, being killed that way is very, very brutal. Um, I think a big part of why it seems, and not to play it down, seems so terrible is because that's a more intimate way of... Intimate. He had to get right up intimately close to the microphone to say that. I think it's just a more intimate way of killing somebody than, right. than like, uh, a crossbow, like Jamie says, with being a coward's weapon, which I think is interesting when Tyrion kills his father with the crossbow, but he strangles her. Mm. And, again, with how much more personal of a, a murder that is, I think that's what enhances that to be so brutal. Because, I mean, technically speaking... She's just doing her job, and he walks in and is like, yep, you're dead, bitch. And so it's a fucked a fuck scene. But there's also that point where she lied at the, the trial right. against him, yeah. and so she then kind of put herself as a player in the game. Yeah, I don't at all think that she was given a choice as to whether or not she had, she could lie. I think she was told that she had to, but... I don't think she really I don't think she was that upset. Decision. Yeah, I, I think it was Tywin saying, hey... You want to be my whore instead of him, then lie, and then you'll you'll get to be sleeping with the hand again. And I think Shay wasn't like, oh, no, my giant of Lannister. She was like, fuck, yeah, my hand of Lannister. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, Shay's, I mean, and, then, and for that reason, Shay is a very complicated and conflicted character within the fandom. A lot of people hate her. A lot of people are... Shea advocates and you know either way it's hard to tell we don't get her and that's what yeah, I love yeah. about the series cool. is we, we don't get Shay's answer as to I loved Tyrion I just hated Tyrion and wanted right. to it's a, it's a revenge fuck Tyr- with her Tywin father, with you know father, was or, fucking with me and or, told me that, that he was gonna kill me kill him if I didn't lie who knows yeah. what she's thinking so, but thank you as, yeah for thanks for the correspondence in, like, we always like hearing your guys that's the kind it, of stuff we do the podcast for I man. was heated about it and I stand by it. I don't like Shay, and I think she gets what's coming to her, and I think it's tragic, A, in that it couldn't be worked out between them, but it never was going to, and B, the after effects of such a, an event yeah. and the circumstances, the darkness that is in Tyrion after. So thank you guys, everyone who's written in and commented yeah. and sent if emails. you would like to do so, you can send us an email at withoutmannersbrotherhood at gmail.com. We're on Facebook if you'd like to 
post over there, send us messages, uh, facebook.com slash brotherhood podcast. I'm on Twitter at manners without Zach's there at car Stark 92. You can rate us, review us, leave podcast reviews all over the place. It helps us a lot more than, you know, you hear it for every podcast, but it really is the truth, man. And so you could do that on, you know, Podbean, Stitcher, Breaker. You can go to rate this podcast dot com slash brotherhood we're just trying to do nerd rat shit with our friends yo yeah so like hit us up we have a website uh brotherhood without dot com yeah and that's pretty sweet check that out it's got all of our episodes you can comment there as well and that's always cool so hopefully if you're an american you voted Yes. Because Nate and I both voted, and that's like it's the... all of our responsibility. I mean, it's all of our responsibility at this moment, regardless of who you're. Yeah, for the world's for. sake, man! For the world's fucking sake, we need to do something. And so, about this shit. yeah, everybody, stay safe. Uh, black so lives matter. COVID still, shit is still rampant and scary, and yeah, of course, black Always. lives still matter. And uh, stay safe and catch us for Catlin 2. Cat 2, is, yeah. And episode. some more announcements. Um, Coming soon. Yeah. Regarding guest appearances right. and the like. And uh, Patreon stuff. Uh, good news on the horizon. We should be expecting an episode very soon of Dunkin' Egg. Dunkin' the Night Egg. Of the Kingdom. Starting with the Hedge Knight. We believe it's going to be three episodes for the Hedge Knight, and then we may either condense or extend that depending on how that yeah. formula works. So check out patreon.com slash without manners and look for that and pre-read that because it's going to be full spoiler. So let's uh, let's do that. I think that'll be it for this episode. I think so. Valor to Harris. Peace. Peace.